Hi, welcome to our second video lecture. In this lecture, we will talk about measures of inequality and poverty. Now, uh, again, last week we introduced the basic concept of development economics and said, what are some of the major questions we talk about? And in that light, inequality and poverty are certainly two of the major themes that we need to talk about. So what do we know about inequality? First, these are two very powerful quotes that I want to direct your attention to. Adam Smith, considered the father of modern economics, famously said that no society can surely be flourishing and happy, of which the far greater part of the members are poor and miserable. Clearly, an indication of the existence of poverty as being a detriment to a society's well-being and a society's happiness. Uh, the second quote is on inequality uh, by Thomas Piketty, who, who is the author of this famous book, Capital in the 21st Century. He says, for millions of people, wealth amounts to little more than a few weeks wages in a checking account of low interest or low interest saving account, a car and a few pieces of furniture. The inescapable reality of this wealth is so concentrated that a large segment of society is virtually unaware of its existence so that many people imagine that it belongs to surreal or mysterious entities. That is why it is so essential to study capital and its distribution in a methodical, systematic way. Now, the question to be asked here is, what is the role of inequality? What is the role of poverty? And whether one takes an ethical lens or whether one takes an economic lens or whether one takes a social lens, how, how is it important? Uh, how is it that these issues of inequality and poverty affect our, uh, our contemporary world? Right? Now, again, there is obviously no consensus on this. So there's a traditional view on, say, inequality, which says that inequality creates incentives for hard work and innovation for instance, only if you see that I have a uh, better and a bigger car, then you have, uh, will you get an incentive to work hard in order to get that car if you want that. Uh, it, another important point is that higher inequality allows higher tax revenue to be collected, which can then be, which can then be used for, uh, you know, the development purposes. Now, so this was the traditional view that there's nothing wrong with inequality. Inequality is good. Inequality may help, uh, you know, help propel economic growth. However, there's a lot of new evidence which sort of uh, contradicts this traditional view. For instance, excess inequality creates distrust and reduces investments in long-term projects. Uh, inequality hinders people's access to health and education and economic inequality weakens political democracy. Now, in light of this new sort of evidence, one is forced to relook at inequality from a more critical lens. And this is what this presentation aims to do. So basically, in this presentation, what we'll be interested in, we'll be interested in measures of inequality, we'll be interested in the impact on the, of inequality on economic growth, and likewise measures of poverty and the impact of poverty on growth, right? Now, finally, before I, 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 I end this presentation, uh, it's very important to think of what Adam Smith had to say on this again. The poor man is ashamed of his poverty. He feels that it either places him out of the sight of mankind or if they take any notice of him, they have, however, scarce any fellow feelings with the misery and distrust he suffers. To feel that we are taken no notice of necessarily damps the most agreeable hope and disappoints the most ardent desire of human nature. The poor goes out and comes in unheeded and when in the midst of a crowd, it is the same obscurity as if shut up in his own hovel. Now, this this is a functional impact of poverty, which is something you don't see in, uh, you know, hard hitting traditional economic reasoning. But here is a functional impact of what it does or what poverty does to one's behavior, one's attitude towards life coming by no less than Adam Smith. Uh, it does give us some idea of, 
the extent of the problem and how we can deal with it. So I will end this video presentation here, but in the main lecture, the PowerPoint for this, for this, for this section, you will see a detailed discussion of the various measures of poverty and the various measures of inequality, how to use them, what are the benefits, what are the, uh, what are the negatives of using those, and how is it that we can use those measures to answer questions like whether inequality is good for uh, the economy or whether it's bad for economic growth. All right. So uh, thank you so much for listening to me, but make sure you go through the entire uh, main PowerPoint in detail. Thank you.